Well, hello everybody. Nine pound hammer, Justin. 5180 on sideband, 120 miles east of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yep. The one with the big antennas and all I loves to talk sideband. Anyways, guys. I want to talk about a couple. Oh, I love to talk radio, period. AM is a big part of my life. Uh, you can see we got a lot of Class C stuff going right here right now. So, you know, what's that say? Anyways, I want to talk about something that drives me nuts. Hopefully, it'll help a lot of people. It's saturation. The number one killer in our hobby. We'll have guys that have went out and bought themselves a striker. They got a 100-watt striker. Then they'll go down to the store and they'll buy them a 1x4. They'll take that striker. They'll saturate the hail out of that 1x4 completely. Take the 1x4's ability. So the 1x4 has a driver. It's got a 1 driving 4 other pills. So with that driver section being in there, there's only so much saturation, saturated input drive that can be a, approached to the one pill. When you take a 100 watt striker and you cram it into that one pill section of that one by four, now the four pill output stage of the one by four cannot produce any headroom or the driver rather, let's say it proper, the driver don't have the ability to make headroom into the four pill output stage. So now your audio, instead of your audio growing, when we, when we drive into the four pill stage, instead of that audio growing on the scope and you're actually having growth of signal, it gets saturated. Your audio starts getting squeezed down and end up getting a muddy, nasty, distorted sound. And guys, I'm talking about on AM. You know, guys, AM is so simple. Uh, it shouldn't be distortion and all that crap on AM. AM is simple. And it's just you don't, you can't overdrive. You can't put too much drive into your amplifier. And it, it's, it's just, it's, you can't do it. You try to do it, you sound like crap, and you, and you end up killing the device in a heat. Because RF is heat. Period. RF is heat. When you get, when you, RF doesn't shock you. Another thing, RF does not shock you. RF burns you. Uh, RF produces heat. So... When you saturate a device like that, you just produce heat. Uh, heat don't make don't make good signal. Heat dissipates uh, and breaks down component. Anyways, I just wanted to, you know, guys, it's real simple. If you're gonna take a hundred watt radio, you don't buy. A low drive amplifier. You're going to take a 100 watt radio, get a device that can take, or get an amplifier that can take the 100 watts. It needs to have four transistors, not one by four. The signal that's going into the amplifier needs to be hitting four transistors. And you can run that duck plucker all day long. But you can't take a one by four turn your little striker down and then try to cram that one by four with a hundred watts and expect that driver pill to be able to have red room to be able to drive the four pill section at that point it's backing up you get to a point to where the driver can't make headroom and everything starts collapsing and then you start getting an audio it sounds like total dog shit. I told you guys over and over and over, if you really want to sound good on the CB radio, run biased amplification, period. Run it on AM, run it on sideband. 
if you're just going to run a carrier or you're going to be running a keyer or you're going to be running a signal that doesn't have information on it. In other words, a signal that does not have voice, run your class A, run your class C. But you can't run class C on sideband and expect to sound like God. It, 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 it's, it's impossible. Um, the amplifier, when you run a class A amplifier on sideband, guys, this is going to sound weird to some of you, but I'm going to tell you it's the truth. It's the physic, physical truth. When you run a sideband, when you run a class A amplifier on sideband, and you're talking into it. Every time that you stop talking, that amp, the transistor turns off and turns back on. It's just like taking taking an arc and two wires together. That's the way I want you all to think about it. CQ, CQ, CQDX, off, arc. CQ, CQ, CQDX, off, off. CQ, off, off. Every time you stop talking, it's just like you're taking and arcing a wire together. That's what's going on electrically inside the circuit. A true sideband amplifier, AB1 classification, got to think of a circle, 360 degree circle. A true sideband amplifier, there is voltage that is being applied to the device, stays on for the whole cycle. When you come up on class C and try to talk sideband, the device comes on, the cycle starts, the device comes off. Now you're forced, you got the device is trying to turn off. And they won't come back on again. It, it's just like taking and arcing something out. That's the way I want you to think about it. And that's the why, why if you take a Class A amplifier and you try to drive it with full power from the transmitter on sideband, you're going to have a horrible, horrible sounding audio. Now, there's... A couple of things that you can do with a Class C amplifier to make it sound halfway usable on sideband. Uh, one is, if it's an old tube style, you, you plate modulate it, or you can plate modulate. Some people will take and they will drive a Class C amplifier, they'll pile drive it, and if you pile drive a Class C amplifier horribly, what you do is you force bias onto the transistor. You actually force the class C to change. And it can be done. I don't recommend it, but another way to, to run to run a class C if you're going to do it and you have to do it is to underdrive and run stuff mildly. Uh, your better bet, as I've told you guys a bunch of thousands of times, is to get the proper classification uh, for the mode of operation. So if you're going to run sideband, you run AB, not B. You can run, run AB, class AB, AM, class AB, you know. I don't even recommend running Class C on AM, but we all do it. 